What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday, everyone. Hopefully, everyone is staying safe, well, healthy. If you took a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. I would suspect at this point there is more people taking a COVID test now. Unfortunately, the data shows things are starting to rise. It's time now for our first pandemic update post-vacation for Saturday, July 15th, 2023. That's right, my vacation has come to an end. I returned yesterday. You may have seen that I posted on Twitter on Thursday a picture of the lake that I was at. I was actually out in a bit boat fishing that morning, doing a little bit of a last-minute fishing before I came back home. Didn't catch anything that morning. Of course not. Why would I on the last day? But uh, I am back now, my socially distant vacation is over and you know what there's a few reasons why i'm glad it's over number one when i just look at the just i mean i just only did a basic look at the data today i didn't do all of my google searches and everything i do i did a couple but not all of them and everything i'm seeing so far is pointing towards we have entered another surge and i suspected that back on my last update Again, it was a brief update. Well, no, it was long in nature, but it was just a brief look at the data back on Monday. And I did post that video there if you didn't see it. It's the last one we did down below. And we said, I think uh, we're seeing the post 4th of July surge. And, well, more data has come in and it suggested we're post 4th of July surge. Now, the summer surge, it's here. But uh, watching the news up in Maine, uh, they were talking about how June was a washout because of the weather. After talking to a few people and doing a little more research, it turns out, yes, that was the case, but it's continuing into July. Because last Saturday, Saturday is known as turnover day in vacation areas. In other words, people who came in for one week are leaving. They check out around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning. A new group of people come, comes in. And I have to tell you, we had to go to the grocery store last Saturday. Uh, the main road is usually bumper to bumper on Saturdays. It was not last Saturday. And I was also, I did a few deliveries. I figured, what the heck, let's give it a try. It's vacationary. I delivered to a rental place. I think I might have said this story in the last video. And they said several people had just canceled, whether it be the weather or because they were sick. And it seemed more than not it was because they were sick post 4th of July. Interesting, eh? COVID is on the rise again. So anywho, that's enough with my story. Let's get into today's pandemic update. I didn't get a chance to go over all the data. We'll add some more stuff tomorrow or Monday. Not certain what's going to happen tomorrow. We're expecting some bad weather here, which may prevent me from recording, you know, thunder. You don't want to hear that in the background. But anywho, uh, India records 54 new COVID infections. Count of active cases is now at 1,408, so they're not seeing an increase in cases. They're actually just holding steady at this point. And the current number of deaths there is 531,914. Then I just saw this a little bit earlier. I was alluded to this on Twitter. Costa Rica, 17 children in the ICU due to severe respiratory infections. Doctors are treating 76 children in one hospital for such infections. But scroll down a little bit further. The UK says two more H5N1 bird flu infections have been found in humans. And I also seen something where there is a respiratory infections ongoing. I believe it's in Brazil as well. So that's something we're going to have to keep our eye on. And here's something else that's interesting. The UK is now saying, keep your dogs on a leash and cats indoors. Pet owners told amid unprecedented bird flu outbreak. Because if you remember, over in Poland, there have been several cats that have gotten H5N1 positive now. So that's not good to see. And we have to update on this. It's been a while. Multi-country outbreak of monkeypox. External situation report. 26 published on July 14, 2023. Since the last situation report published on June 24th of 2023, and as of July 11th, 316 new confirmed monkeypox cases and two new deaths have been reported to the WHO around the world in the various different countries that are reporting. And remember, testing is not the best, so 
That number could likely be a lot higher, we don't know. Here in the United States, we do have that one website I use, and we're going to use it today, that does show and in the wastewater detection of monkeypox. Let's continue on here. I don't recall if we reported on this or not. I think we might have, but I don't know. I, it's, it's very well worth reporting on again. Study. COVID spread from deer to humans multiple times. And I know I did tweet this on Twitter. And this is a huge problem. The first year of the pandemic, and even the second year, that we saw those huge waves in the fall and winter months. And I can just tell you from experience here in Pennsylvania, there's a ton of hunting camps in Pennsylvania. Now that alone at hunting season, you get a bunch of guys unmasked together at hunting camps. You know, they're having a little bit to drink. I know what goes on. There's a hunting camp in my family. I, I know exactly what goes on there. They're breeding grounds for COVID. However, a lot of them are in the woods, you know, hunting. And their object is to, you know, harvest a deer, a buck, a doe, whatever. Well, say that deer could be carrying COVID. It's very well possible that spread uh, COVID to humans. And we know the six feet rule or whatever many feet rule it was at the beginning of the pandemic. We know it could actually be a lot further than that. And when you're X amount of feet away from a deer, you could get COVID. And there's still a lot of questions as to whether or not after you have, you know, you got a deer and you're dragging that deer out of the woods. There's still questions if you could get uh, COVID that way. So it is possible that, um, could be have been a big help to a cause transmission of COVID. You know, someone's out hunting. Number one, they could get it at the hunting camp. Number two, they could get it hunting. Then they go back home to their families. Then they all get COVID. And then they go back to work. You know, it goes on and on. So, you know, COVID spread from deer to humans. Guess what? It's a real deal. All right, we do want to take a look at this. I'm going to have to refresh it. I do want to show you air quality because it continues to be a problem in a lot of places. And you're seeing these uh, yellow colors. The reason why it's yellow in the east is not because of wildfire smoke. It's just a really bad air quality because of the density of the air. I'm looking at my weather station to the right of me. I mean, it's 91 degrees outside. The heat index, it was 101 a few minutes ago. And the dew point is 74. When air is that much moisture in the air, it is really hard to breathe. And that's not just happening in the northeast. It's happening in the south and southwest. So heat strokes are a big problem. And it's south. And we can incorporate weather with health in these videos sometimes. And today is a great example. The south has been really, really hot this summer. Some places are closing in on 30 days in a row of uh, temperatures at 100. I know El Paso has been breaking records. And let's take a look up here in the Great Lakes in the north. Yes, this is wildfire smoke that is getting mixed in. And unfortunately, some of this wildfire smoke is going to get mixed in with this weather system that's coming through. So that's really bad. And that um, it's going to make things more severe in terms of the flash flying in the northeast. Not going to get into that. But let's continue on here. You know the air quality is bad. And I should also add, in places of bad air quality, it can make COVID worse. Like, for example, if you already have COVID, guess what? Um, and you're having the breathing problems, it's even worse than bad air quality. But not only that, there are some findings now saying bad air quality causes COVID to spread more easily. All right, we have to show you Walgreens. Walgreens positivity is rising. 32% is the current week positivity. The prior week was 29.1%, difference of 2.9%, so it is trending upward. 1,307 total tests. Prior week, 1,792. We'll get another update on this, hopefully on Monday. I'm not going to get into a bunch of these states because, like I said, there is a lot of things to get through here today. And unfortunately, I do have to show you this. If I do do anything tomorrow, it's going to be the wastewater update. If I don't get to it tomorrow, you'll definitely get a wastewater update on Monday. Uh, take a look here. Wastewater is now trending upward in all regions and for some regions it's been multiple weeks the southeast and the northeast multiple weeks now and you can see the west coast it's starting to play a little catch up and go up faster the slowest area of rise would be the midwest region at this time taking a look at the national wastewater surveillance let's refresh this to make sure it's most up to date it should be just loaded everything up today uh new sites 127 
0 to 19. Uh, yeah, I'm not liking this. 693. That's down by 14. Uh, 20 to 39 percent. That's low to near moderate. 377 sites. 40 to uh, 59 percent. That is moderate. 129 cents. That 129 sites. That's up by 10 percent. 60 to 79 percent. That's moderate to pushing near high. Yeah, there's 37 of them now, and that's up by 19 percent. And last week we had zero, big fat zero, at the highest level of 80 to 100%, which is really high COVID detected. So now there's four, and that's up by 33%. We're not going to take a look at any of these, but I can just tell you by looking at this, we do have some concerning areas. The northeast is rising. We do have a red area up in Rhode Island. So, yes, we're going to dive into this either tomorrow or on Monday. We'll go through a lot of sites. Let's continue on here. Moving myself. Now I'm going to leave myself here on the left for a second. We do want to take a look at the variant proportions. We'll probably have a variant proportion update. Mm, I don't know. Maybe on Tuesday. There's definitely going to probably be a new one on Friday because that's the next time this will update. It's hard to say what's going to happen with that because just look here. It's jumbled. They're not sorting this out from most to least i don't understand what their deal is they don't care about data quality anymore that's for sure xvb 2.3 is at 13.4 percent xvb 1.9.2 is at 5.6 percent xvb 191 is at 9.4 percent and just coming down here xvb 116.1 is at 10.4 percent xvb 116.6 is at 4.1 percent xvb 1.5 is at 16.1 percent it's no longer dominant the dominant strain is xbb 116 which is at 17.5 percent xbb is at 3.6 percent and eg.5 is at 13 percent and there's a whole bunch of other smaller ones in between there's a couple that are over one percent like this xbb 1.5.59 that's at one point six percent and so on you get the idea here it's variant soup there's a lot of different variants at least about 15 if not more here let's continue on here and this is something that i want to show you let's refresh this it should be up to date because again i loaded all my tabs up today but um we're not going to go through every state for a while there we were going through each state that's rising or not rising and you can just see here what i will show you is this orange and darker orange is moderate to substantial increase the yellowish color is stable then you have this green which is moderate then you have gray which is insignificant then you have like a greenish blue which is substantial decrease these are decreases and what are you seeing here predominantly either stable or rising very few states are dropping at this point so as a whole around the country if we were to average this all out it and people have it is now rising. Emergency department visits. I should have been clear. These are emergency department visits. They are rising. Uh, look where I just was in Maine. They are now seeing a substantial increase. See, yet again, I'm glad. I'm glad my vacation was over. I, I hit it uh, just before uh, things started getting bad. I mean, another week later, I would have been like, nope, I'm not going, not going. And look here. We are clearly in a summer church. Look at all the southeast states, except for Arkansas. They are rising now. The west coast, um, it's now stable, but that's going to probably switch to a rising because if we go back to uh, wastewater again, Biobot, you can see the west coast region, it's definitely in the playing catch-up mode so yes this is terribly uh, concerning at this point we do have places that don't report at this time i wish they would and look at that surprisingly somehow we got iowa who remembers when iowa said they were going to stop reporting i do but anywho moving on we're going to skip over this day in COVID history we might actually retire that i don't know we do want to take a look at some of these uh wastewater scan sites because uh, we want to see what's going on so i'm going to take a look here at maine first let's see what's being detected cove portland maine 65,000 population uh, COVID is being detected influenza not being detected and COVID is rising at this point rsv dropping hmpv is dropping at this time norovirus finally that is dropping no monkeypox is detected at this time let's come down here closer 
to Boston, a little closer. This is New Hampshire, actually. And co again, COVID is rising here. Influenza not being detected. RSV not being detected. HMPV not being detected. Monkeypox, no problems with that. Norovirus, uh, there is a little bit of norovirus, but not terrible at this time. That is holding flat. Now, Boston, let's take a look at Boston. Coronavirus is actually dropping on this update in Boston. And you can see, it really rose starting at the beginning of July, and now it's starting to drop. Influenza, not a problem. RSV, not a problem. HMPV, not a problem. No monkeypox being detected. That's good news. Norovirus, it is low at this time. Now let's just go somewhere completely different in the country. And unfortunately, we do have to refresh this. And we do want to take a look what's going on in Florida and Orlando area. We'll just use this one. I believe this one is closer to Disney World. Wow, coronavirus rapidly rising in this area. Influenza, not a problem. HMPV, not a problem. RSV, not a problem. Uh... Influenza is also not a problem. Speaking of influenza, we're going to take a look at the weekly update for that at the end of this video. No monkeypox detected. There is some norovirus being detected, and it's flat at this time after a prolonged drop, so that's not good to see. Now let's go somewhere on the West Coast, and that will be all we will look at for these for today, because I know this video is running long, and we do have a lot to look at. And let's just take a look here at this site in California. Coronavirus is rising. Influenza, no problems. RSV, no problems. HMPV, no problems. Norovirus is starting to rise. That's not good to see. And monkeypox, none being detected at this time. Alrighty, moving on, we do want to take a look and see what's going on in New Jersey. Let's take a look at the hospital situation in New Jersey. Currently, they have 172 people in the hospital. That number could potentially be higher. Three hospitals did not report. 67 out of 70. Five people are on a ventilator. All right, taking a look at Philadelphia. Philadelphia has been bad lately, but again, I just told you. It is now 92 degrees outside here in northeast Philadelphia. The dew point is 74. There's a lot of heat-related issues going on. But on top of that, we probably are seeing a hidden wave of COVID. Again, we don't have wastewater data from Philadelphia. There's been a problem. I don't know why it has not been rectified yet. It's been several months since the problem first started. But hey, 851 incidents, even if you include heat-related issues, that's bad. And it's been constantly. There have been a lot of days over 800. Very few days below 800 now, so I'm concerned at what's going on here. That's a tremendous strain on the Philadelphia hospitals. Let's do a live look in at what's going on in Montgomery County right now. And there are some incidents to be had. Let's take a look at Chester County, which is another suburb of Philadelphia. And again, there are some incidents to be had. Unresponsive person, that could be in related to the heat, uh, respiratory difficulty, that could be anything. That could be COVID, that could be heat-related. All right, now I have to show you this. And I'm going to move myself back to the right. I wish I did not have to show you this, but I do. New York State, 500 new cases reported yesterday, not including at-home infections, not including reinfections. But here's the bad news. Positivity yesterday, 7.8%. And I tweeted this on Twitter. That's bad. Seven-day average is now... 5.6%. That's bad as well. It's rising, folks. It's really rising. I don't know if that positivity is just from uh, first-time infections or if it includes all the other business. I know that likely does not include at-home tests, but I don't know how that actually works since they're not including certain things. But again, overall, a 7.8. So let's just say it's all blended together, and that's how you get 7.8% positivity. It, again, it's rising. It's not good. Let's see. Hopefully it doesn't go over 10%, but let's see. I mean, I get it. Testing's way down, but again, this is a sign of a wave because for the longest time, it was holding steady in the 4 to 5 range, and before that, it was much lower, but now it's rising. This is not good to see. Let's take a look here at the hospitalizations. The good news is the hospitalizations in New York State are not rising yet. You can see here. 387 people in hospital, 44 in the ICU. And when we take a look at admissions, you might say, oh, they look like they're rising. They're still just bouncing off the bottom. Let's take a look at New York City. Let's see what New York City's doing. New York City is still just bouncing off the bottom. And we'll go with the current hospitalizations in ICUs. And they're not rising yet, but they are flat at this time. 
165 people hospitalized, 21 people in the ICU. Taking a look here at uh, Texas. Texas reported 4,482 new cases, and that includes probable cases. Uh, people who have passed away, 21 this week. That's down by two. It was 23 the prior week. 518 people are hospitalized. Hospitalizations did increase. So, what do we know from that? Well, cases are down. You think that's good, but you know what? With hospitalizations increasing and the fact that we don't see as many hospitalizations as we used to with ways because whether well, or not tested, some believe it's less severe, and maybe it is. I don't know. But the point is, if hospitalizations are rising while cases are down, good chances, a very good chance that, yeah, they're likely missing a lot of tests. They're not testing enough. So cases, actuality, are probably rising right now because we're watching the majority of the southeast. Wastewater is rising at this time. Uh... Let's just do a brief international update, shall we? Let's just take a look at what the international number is. Around the world, cases are down 53%. Weekly death change, deaths are down 40%. And let's quickly take a look at the flu numbers. You can see, for the majority of places across the U.S., it's minimal. Even New York City is down to the low category. And remember, there are multiple categories here. Low is a level 2 risk. And Washington, D.C. is minimal. Puerto Rico is at level 3 moderate. And this has been continuous for many, 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 many months. It's been an ongoing problem. And COVID tends to be higher in the summer there as well. So that's something we have to continue to watch. Puerto Rico is, you know, they're having some health concerns. So if you're traveling to Puerto Rico, I highly advise wearing one of these. Anywhere, anywhere. That's my final message for today. Look at this. This is just some of my masks. I have several fresh masks. You want to be well stocked up right now, folks. We're definitely heading into another wave. The summer surge is upon us, especially in the southeast and, unfortunately, the northeast as well. And as we know, when kids go back to school, just a month, it's just a month down the road already. Kids will be going back to school. It's going to be problematic. That's going to cause more cases in kids. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. I can see this is 22 minutes long, very long update. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. If you know someone that needs to see this important life-saving information, by all means, please share this with them. We need to get this to as many people as possible because I'm seeing a lot of uh, people being forced to remove this in a health care setting because the place wants to make people think, oh, that's not a deal anymore, it's no big issue. I just proved to you, my friends, it's rising again, and you know, even the fatalities are down, long COVID is real. People are still getting disabled in high numbers, and it's really dangerous to get a COVID infection. Anytime you get sick, it's not good at all. It does not build up your immunity. You know, it's it's a risk and you could spread it on to someone else and that person could be immune compromised and you know, it could be really dangerous or perhaps deadly for them. So please, by all means, stay protected, stay safe. I'll see you all again next time. Stay safe, everyone. Have a great Saturday afternoon. Once again, it is great to be back. I'm glad to be back reporting the data for you again. I will see you all again next time. Thanks for watching.